Blimps are not common today, with only 25 left in the world. The only time you might see one is over a football stadium or at the Daytona 500, broadcasting the live footage on TV. Blimps in the past had much more interesting uses. Many people thought they would become the future of air travel. Let's look at why this changed, and how blimps work. The first balloon was built by the Montgolfier brothers in France and set sail with human passengers on November 21, 1783. This balloon traveled 500 feet up and covered a distance of 5 miles. Shortly after, on December 10th, the first gas balloon was launched using hydrogen. It was able to travel 25 miles. The main issue with these balloons was that their path was determined by the wind. The next step towards viable transportation was a controllable airship. In 1852, this became a reality. Henry Gifford of France built a 3 horsepower steam engine to propel a hydrogen airship at 6 miles per hour for 20 miles. The most famous airship designer was Ferdinand Count von Zeppelin, who built the first commercially viable rigid airship. Rigid meaning it had an internal metal framework. His airships could reach speeds of up to 20 miles per hour and were used in World War I to bomb Paris and London in Zeppelin raids. Over in the U.S., the Goodyear Company began producing airships in 1917 for the U.S. Navy. In 1931, they built the USS Akron and in 1933 its sister ship, the USS Macon. Both of these airships were used by the Navy for scouting operations. To extend the range that they could scout, they were designed to be able to deploy and collect planes mid-air. They could hold five fighter biplanes inside, and used a long arm with a hook to lower planes out of the airship, where they would then take off. Upon returning, the planes would hook onto the trapeze attached to the arm and get hoisted back into the airship. Both later crashed in the ocean due to bad weather. This was the beginning of the demise of airships. After the Hindenburg disaster in 1937 and the rapid increase in airplane technology, airships were removed from service across the globe. There are three types of airships, rigid airships, semi-rigid airships, and non-rigid airships, or blimps. Rigid airships have an internal framework to maintain their shapes, while blimps rely on the pressure of the gas inside. They all utilize the same principles to rise into the sky, but I will be looking at blimps specifically. Helium gas, which is lighter than air, is pumped into the envelope of the blimp. The surrounding air exerts a buoyant force on the blimp equal to the weight of fluid or air displaced. This buoyant force has to be greater than the force of gravity, or weight of the blimp, helium inside, and payload for it to rise. Once airborne, air is pumped into the ballasts, which are inside the envelope, and the weight increases causing the forces to reach equilibrium. To descend, the blimp pilot will pump more air into the ballast, adding weight, thus causing the blimp to descend. During flight, the amount of air in the fore and aft ballast can be adjusted for stability. Most blimps are able to fly up to 50 miles per hour and at altitudes of up to 7,000 feet, using propeller engines for propulsion. Now let's do a physics problem related to the Goodyear blimp. The Goodyear blimp has an envelope volume of 8,425 cubic meters. It's filled with helium, which has a density of 0.179 kilograms per cubic meter. The mass of the blimp is 8,972 kilograms without helium. The density of air is 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter. First, let's find the upward buoyant force acting on the blimp. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram on the left showing the forces. We have the buoyant force of the surrounding fluid, or air. Uh, then opposing that is going to be the weight or the gravitational force. But for A, we only need to find the buoyant force acting on the blimp. So the buoyant force is equal to the density of the air times the volume of the blimp multiplied by gravity. So all of these are given. So we have 1.29 for the density of the air. The volume of the blimp is 8,425 cubic meters. Then gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and this will give you 106,509 newtons acting upward as the buoyant force. So now we want to know what is the maximum mass that this blimp can support. So let's write out a net force equation for this. So we have the buoyant force going upward, and then acting against it would be the weight or force of gravity of the blimp itself. So that would be the mass of the blimp uh, times gravity. And then we're also we also have to subtract the mass of the helium 
times gravity. You don't want to forget that. And then we have the mass that it can support, which we're trying to find, times gravity. And this will equal zero because we want to know the maximum mass, so it won't be rising and it won't be sinking. So then for, oh, we don't know the mass of helium, so we do not know this. It is not given the problem up here. We can find it using the density equation. And density of helium will be equal to the mass of helium divided by the volume that the helium takes up. So that would be uh, the same volume as the blimp. So volume of the blimp, and then if you solve for mass, mass equals density of helium times the volume of the blimp. Also for the buoyant force, that would be the density of air times the volume of the blimp times gravity. And you have to remember to keep the gravity here when you plug in for M. So down here, we have density of air, volume of the blimp times gravity minus the mass of the blimp times gravity. And this is where we sub in for mass. So we have the density of helium this time, the volume of the blimp still. Then we have gravity, you don't forget that. And then we're solving for the uh, mass that it can support. So we can move that to the other side, uh, add it over there, and that would be times gravity. If you see all these terms have a gravity in them, so then when you are gonna be dividing the gravity over, if you were to solve for the mass, uh, it would cancel with all these. So the gravities can cancel here. Then we can plug in. So density of air, 1.29. The volume of the blimp was 8,425. Then we subtract the mass of the blimp, which is up here in the problem. That is 8,972 kilograms. And then we have to subtract the density of helium which is in the problem uh, 0.179 a kilogram per cubic meter, and then times the volume of the blimp, which is 8,425. That will give you the mass it can support, the maximum mass it can support. So the maximum mass it can support is 388.2 kilograms. Yeah, and the reason why this is so low is the Goodyear blimp has the ability to turn its propellers to face downward. So it will also create a lifting force, which would be up here. So it'd be a force of lift, which I'm not gonna go into. And that could help the blimp go up in the air. Then at higher altitudes and different temperatures, it would also be able to fly. And these numbers might not be exactly accurate, but I did gather them from the website. So for the last part, would you expect the blimp to float at 7,000 feet where there's a density of 0 0.590 kilograms? So 0 0.590, and that's for the density of air. So then we can plug that into the equation and the only thing changing would, would go in here. So it'd be 0 0.590 times 8,425. And you still subtract this, subtract this, and you'd see the mass of support. And if the miss mass over here, the mass that can support is greater than zero, then the blimp would be able to float at that altitude. If it's less than zero and a negative number, it would not be able to float. So if you plug this in and you keep the same numbers up here, uh, you're gonna get negative 5,509 kilograms, which is less than zero. So it would not be able to float at that altitude. So that means that it would need to use the propellers to generate lift to stay up in the air or even rise to the altitude. All right, now let's get back to the video. Today, airships are beginning to increase in popularity once again. The US Navy has been looking into future uses of airships for reconnaissance and transport of heavy cargo. In Afghanistan, airships have been stationed above US military bases to provide surveillance of the surrounding areas. Companies across the globe see airships as a vehicle of the future, carrying passengers to the North Pole, releasing drones into the sky, and carrying cargo to remote locations. Airships are making a comeback, and soon you will see them everywhere.